as you can see the pinion seal on my front differential of my Jeep has been leaking so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the drive shaft and to do that before I do that I'm going to mark it with a paint pen I'm going to mark the differential case and the drive shaft so I make sure I get them lined up the same and I put it back together then I'm going to remove the U-joint caps two bolts using a 5 16 socket Move the two bolts on each cap so a total of four bolts and then uh, I usually put a C-clamp on the U-joint caps so they don't fall off and you lose all the needles it's kind of a safety thing then I'm going to pull it out I'll usually got to pry it open off with a uh, screwdriver or something and then I'm going to tie it up over on the side against the control arm just using a bungee cord keep it out of the way while we do the rest of the work see where it's been leaking there on the around the, the pinion it's not dripping on the ground leaking but there's plenty of uh, grease out there lube next thing we're going to do is take that same paint pan and mark the yoke and the nut I'm also going to take note of how deep the nut is on the shaft so I can get it all back in the same spot I'm going to use an inch and an eighth socket, an impact gun, buzz the nut off. And there's a washer behind the nut. I'm going to take that out. Then you'll need a gear puller. And uh, you bolt the gear puller to the yoke. Buzz it off. Use my impact again because it was handy. Set it off to the side. And we got to pull a seal. And I used a seal puller at first, at least tried to. And all it did was uh, break the through the seal's case. So that didn't work. So then I went to the old pry on it with a screwdriver method. And it just laughed at me. So I got a little more serious and hit it with a hammer and chisel. And it's a flanged seal, so I just bend that flange in until it moved. It had been glued in last time and until I broke that glue loose and it started to spin, just kind of beat on it. And then I went back to the old screwdriver method. Be careful when you're prying it out of there. Uh, it's real easy to knock the oil pan out of the way. You're going to need the oil pan underneath it at this point because as soon as you get that seal out, Oh, there goes my oil pan. As soon as you get that seal out, it's going to start dri uh, dripping fluid all over you. So get that back up there, get it out. Speaking of fluid, since it's uh, in need of a seal, it's probably in need of a lube chain. So I'm going to buzz the cover bolts off the front of the diff. <clears throat> and we'll change the fluid while we're at it. Plus, doing this will help on the other side getting it clean. Otherwise, it'll drip, drip, drip while you're trying to put the new seal in. You can't get a decent uh, uh, seal. Um, I'll put one bolt back in loose before I pry it open. That'll hold it in place while all that fluid drips out. And once it stops dripping, we can take the cover, or that last bolt out, and I'll cover off and uh, start cleaning it up. This is probably the biggest hassle of the whole job is just cleaning you got to clean that cover you got to clean the gasket surface get it all dry and clean so you can get a good seal on it I used well first I stuffed a rag in it just so that I wouldn't get the old silicone in it at least not down in the bottom and I went at it with a razor blade scraped it all off couldn't find my razor blade scraping tool so I'm holding it barehanded don't tell OSHA then uh, I went after it with some lacquer thinner and a rag. It kind of softened up. They used to look for me like Yama Bond, some gray sealing on it before. Then I went after some brake cleaner to make sure I got it nice and dry. <clears throat> I'd do the same thing to the cover, the differential cover too. <clears throat> Once it's all clean, I just put a coat of black silicone on it. Permatex, 
around every hole all along the flat surface. <coughs> Don't gotta get nuts with it. A smooth coat. The cover back on, put all the bolts back in, and torque those up. The 5 16 bolts, so I just torqued them to 29 foot pounds. <coughs> Use your uh, star method or whatever you want. Don't go around in a circle. Back to the pinion side, clean that up. And now it's not dripping because you drained all the fluid. Put a little black RTV on the surface where the bearings or the seal is going to go. And put your new seal in. Make sure you lube the seal too the inner right, and the inside of it. I forgot this time so I ended up just lubing the yoke instead. That works too. I'm going to just tap it in with a hammer. You can kind of tell which sides are tight first and you hit them first and just work around in a circle. A little bit at a time, small hammer, no big blows, don't bend the case and the seal. You'll know when it gets all the way in, you'll hear it. It'll sound different. You'll be tapping on the case instead of the tin. Then you can look all the way around and make sure that the flange is seated against the case. Lube up that yoke and hold my finger on the line I made on the case so I can line it up from the other end. Line up the yoke with the case, put it back on in the same spot, put the nut back or the washer back on, and then the nut. I'm going to buzz it back on with the impact, but I'm going to take the impact off a few times, look at it, I'm looking for that same amount of shaft sticking out of the nut that I had before and I want all the yellow lines lined up the nut, the yoke, the case. That way you know you got the same torque on it it had before. And put the drive shaft back on. Lined up the same yellow marks all line up. Put the U-joint caps back on with the two nuts, or the two bolts rather. And then you got to torque those. I couldn't find in the book what to torque them to, but they're quarter fine, so I just went to 129 inch pounds. Seemed about right. And clean up the case, all that stuff that had leaked on it before. Clean that up so we can spot if it's leaking again. Wipe it all off. I used a little uh, degreaser, wiped it off, and hit it again with brake clean, and it came out real nice. That'll be it on this side. We'll go over the other side and fill it up with lube. Just take the plug out. And it'll take about a bottle and a half of uh, gear lube. Book says 80, 90 weight. Here's the second bottle. We'll just go until it starts running out. And then wait till it just stops running, until it's just dripping. Put the plug back in, wipe it off, and you are done. Pretty easy job. Don't be scared. Jeep on. <laughs>